I want you to sit for a couple more months. Numbers don't matter. I want you all to get accustomed to the fact as you go on in this world, there are going to be fewer and fewer who actually want to follow Jesus radically. But there will be a lot of talk about him. But you're going to find yourself not necessarily having great numbers that agree with you. You have to decide early o'clock if you're following him because of who he is or because of somebody told you about him and you think, well, now is the right time. Or maybe you get a good feeling when you think about him, but you have to count the cost and make sure, even though he has paid a price for you, you understand following the Jesus of the Bible is not going to make you popular. And in fact, only a remnant was at the foot of the cross from a distance. And it's the same that will happen. It's already started happening. Even your understanding of repentance is not going to be the same as those who think it's simply saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because repentance is not simply saying, I'm sorry. What I am finding out more and more now, and I'm going to read some scripture in a way where the language is a little bit more um, not doesn't change the meaning, but it's um, it's more like a paraphrase. But when you go back to some of the other translations, NLT, etc., it, it's not leading you astray. It's not wrong. But sometimes we want Daddy to tell us things. And sometimes we grasp it in simpler language. But it doesn't take away the meaning. I want us to understand that the key thing is really an understanding of what it really means to repent. There is a blindness in our soul that blocks us from truly seeing the sins in us because we have forgotten that there are deep and hidden things. The word says deep and hidden. And I keep saying this to people, but they're not all understanding. Deep and hidden means, so come into the hidden places of my heart. Hidden, it's hidden from us. There are areas in our own soul that are hidden from us, y'all. We think we know all areas. But we don't. It's hidden. Only God can see it. And that's why it's a dangerous thing to say things like, I'm just doing everything I'm supposed to do. Well, while that's okay, you can never say you're doing everything you're supposed to do. You could say that in your own understanding, you are obeying God. But you have to always say, God expose the deep and hidden things in me. And that's why it's always not a good thing to defend yourself. Well, there are those who don't show me love. Or there are those who are not as, as, as caring as me because I'm caring. Sure, sure we're caring. There is always going to be a hidden part of us, a blind spot. You know what a blind spot is? It blind, you can't see it. Just like in the driver when you're driving. They say there's a blind spot in the rearview mirror. I mean, I don't know if these smart cars that I make now 
have blind spots, I don't know, because I didn't learn with a smart car. But I learned that I didn't depend, not even on the rearview mirror, when I had to come out and go left or go right or whatever. I learned to drive with a gear stick, and I could drive with the gear shift anytime I could hold my own on a hill without it being an automatic car. I can jump start a car. I learned that way. So they have no kind of things that, you know, well, you're dependent on to really know how to drive. I mean, it's very easy to drive an automatic. Try and drive a gear shift is a little different, uh, a different story. And, and, and I'm saying this because we have reduced our understanding of following Yeshua Amashiach to our understanding of following him. But there's a way that seems right unto a man that leads to destruction. There's a way that seems right. It means that person is saying, I'm right. I'm doing something that's right. I'm okay. So we cannot base our understanding of our journey on what our understanding of our journey is. We can't. We have to understand that there's going to be blind spots in our journey. And pride will not allow us to say that. But I have seen where those who have said, there has to be areas I don't know about. God exposed those areas. Pride is starting to come down now. Because pride says, I don't have anything wrong with me. I is other people. It's what they do me. It's always what other people do us that keep us focusing on how good we are. The truth is, we don't know anything about other people. We know nothing. We only know what they show us. So you see it on Facebook. May I say fake book? You see the pictures, what they show us is what we see. So what a person allows you to see, and believe you me, unless you are God himself, you don't see everything about a person. You only see what they allow you to see. Even if you think you know everything about them because they talk to you and they talk to others, I have news for you all. I have not yet met a Christian who functions with one part of their soul and when they start talking about how they respond to situations that you don't start to see a different let me say personality not demon they could go for an interview on song real good get the job based on the interview Come to find out how they function in a job that's under pressure. Who they present in the interview, very different to the soul, their part of their soul, mind, will, emotions, that goes totally spastic when they're faced with pressure. I'm just saying, people allow us to see what they allow us to see. So that's why God says you cannot tell what's in the heart, what is in the soul of man. There's a lot that's hidden that only he knows. And so I want us to understand that there's a level of repentance that has nothing to do with, okay, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I am sorry. That's not repentance. There's a whole back system operating in I'm not yet met a person that is not operating in there's different levels of operating in the blind spots there's a whole back system that as God begins to crack open some areas they are all in shock by what God exposes you know it's like I can't I'm not a gardener so I can't think of a fruit that when you begin to peel it, it's enormous. And then when you really get into the, 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 I guess it's like a coconut that somebody never saw before. 
you know, you, you start to um, peel off the fiber. You don't really know anything about the coconut until you start to hit into that hard part that has that inside jelly. Not soft necessarily. It could be a hard coconut. If you don't really know a coconut, you'll be shocked to know as you go deeper what you find. That's it. That's it with us. The problem with us is that we think we know everything about ourselves. We don't actually, but he does. So when you find yourself struggling, or maybe you're not struggling, maybe you're like, I'm real cool, oh, Brizo, I'm cool. Point is, the word says, deep and hidden things. So whether you're cool or you're struggling, when you come to understand, there is a further breaking through that God wants to do, you will then recognize and you will admit and you will say, I don't know everything about myself. I don't even know everything about that person either. We could never reach a conclusion about somebody based on our understanding of them. And that's why marriage is so challenging. And particularly if we are not honest and transparent when we are preparing, you could understand the surprises that come. And if you're honest and transparent, let me tell you what the key is. Every day you go to God and you continue to ask God to expose the deep and hidden things so that you can turn around and love that spouse the way you need to be loved, the way they need to be loved. Those who talk about, because people talk, you know, we classify marriage one way, you know? Everybody's struggling. Truth is, people struggle, but some struggle more than others. But if we really want to know about those who we're fascinated by, because we find that they're all getting along, I promise you, if they were to tell you, there's not a moment that they don't recognize they need God to deal with them. So they're individually asking God to deal with each other. Separately, they're not focused on the other, they focus on themselves. And that's the reason why they would continue, continue to love each other in the midst of whatever God exposed. Because they know it has to be God who will restore and heal. And when they, something happens, they don't wait for the other person to say sorry, even if the other person doesn't say sorry. They know they have to say sorry. They have to make amends. Even if the other person doesn't do it. They have to find a way to move on. Even if the other person who is wrong doesn't say they're sorry. They can't stay there because they know the price of unforgiveness and bitter root judgment. They know the cost. I'm saying here that... As I stand back and I see this awesome God who is breaking through and breaking barriers in people's lives, I've seen a pattern. And it comes back to this line in Psalm 51 that says, and it's verses from verse 3, I'm so ashamed. I feel such pain and anguish within me. I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you, O Lord. I can't get away from the sting of my sin. This is not condemnation. This is, I can't get away from the sting of my sin. Do you see the difference between I'm really doing my best? Perhaps you may be doing your best, but you need to understand your best does not mean that you are even hitting at stuff that's there. You need to understand from now there's stuff that's there that we don't know. That's why Isaiah said, woe is me. It was when the glory of God came close, he saw sin that he didn't even know was there because he was getting ready to go on a mission. 
until God showed him there's some more cleaning up. I need us to understand it's not a case of gosh, it's so terrible. I'm so terrible. It's not that. It's just that we are so confident. I'm okay. I'm, it's that one. That's the one that's not okay. Since I'm telling you right now and if there were more hours in a day and I would see more people and I would see more who are coming out of um, satanic ritual abuse, um, I would just get more opportunity to see God's miracle working power. But his miracle working power works especially when we acknowledge the sting of our sin against God. Those are the ones, and I know some of you get a little kind of, gosh, boy, we have to hear about this. See, this is encouragement for you because some of you are on cycles that do stop. And some are like, why isn't there a breakthrough? And some of us, we're living life, and I'll come back to this later, in this kind of doldrum way, heavy, always a problem. There are areas that are hidden that's allowing the enemy to continue to take us down a certain road a certain way of thinking and we don't have to live that way but I notice that when desperation comes and desperation is not simply crying out and weeping tears y'all desperation is admitting every single time. Look in the Bible. When someone came to recognition, it was somebody God was using to help them. Look at Nathan with David. David was having a good time, sending down the place. Clearly had to have been blinded, but it was when David, Nathan spoke those words. Boom. Something hit him. So he wasn't by himself, please God, please, please. He wasn't. He was confronted. So confrontation is a good thing, but some of us don't want confrontation because we know best. We don't. We don't know best. We have to trust God. He will put people in our lives who will say, okay, perhaps let's look at things this way. When you look at Moses, his father-in-law told him, this is not good what you're doing. You want to see everybody whole day, every day, night and day. This is not good. Imagine telling Moses that. Pride had to have gone out of the window for him to say, okay, because this was Moses. And he could have said, I'm the only one that could see about these people. But he listened. Look at Saul who became Paul. While Jesus directly confronted him, he had to agree for somebody else to come alongside him and say, okay, let's go. Let's go for some further deliverance. There's always someone. That's why God has his church the way his church is. You can't be a lone ranger by yourself, but I'm here to tell you Sometimes the anointing on another person will break the yokes on you. Because that's how God has designed it to be. Problem is, we may only want certain people to be those people we've chosen to talk to us. And after a while, if next week and the week after you telling that person the same story, it's time not to, for you to let go of that person, but there's a strong anointing needed. You need to be more transparent to somebody else. Because there's some deeper things that need to be uncovered that your constant companion, friend, acquaintance, whoever, cannot unearth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? So, it says here, I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you, Lord. You know, somebody asked me recently, you know, well, they're waiting to see the fruit in somebody's life. 
And then they'll know they've repented. I said, well, aside from that, you will also see them literally so in anguish over the sin in their life that they wouldn't hesitate even to make amends to those that they have hurt and damaged. Because that's what acknowledgement of sin does. It's not possible always to go to everybody, but there are some people in a small church like this still missing people who they haven't gone to to say, I've hurt you and I'm sorry. Stop with the buts. But you know you did. No. Cut it out. I'm sorry. I'm giving you an example. So we talk about, well, you know, you can't go to everybody. That's true. But there are those who we still have not acknowledged that we have damaged, we have hurt. We still feel that it has to be the way we see it. And I'm here to say we could never know how we truly are. But you could feel a certain way. So I want to caution you even further. There are parts of your soul that can feel very different at different times. You never woke up and you've one way. Then somebody does something to you, triggers you your next way. By the time you end the day, your third way. You say, well, you know, it was just how the day went. There are parts of your soul, mind, will, and emotions that respond differently to different situations. And sometimes the part that has not been redeemed because all of your soul must be whole and complete. But science tells us, I know that people get attention when you hear science because you know we want to believe the science, believe the science, right? Science tells us that all kinds of things could call us, cause us for our soul to split. There's trauma, there's divination, there's divination in the family line that can cause your soul to split from in the womb. David said, I was born in iniquity. Which meant iniquity affected him, which it means it could affect us. Sometimes our problem goes all the way back. Mercifully, God has shown us how, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to seek his face. From conception to ask him to heal from conception. But I'm saying that if you are a person who it's a cycle, it's the change doesn't last long. You find yourself going through seasons. I mean, listen, y'all. This is not the topic that I want to share, what I'm about to say. This is not the topic, but I will say this. This I will say. We need to be tired, tired, T-I-R-E-D, of the moodiness that we allow our soul to present to others. How are you? Well, you know, I'm not sure. I have people come into me now telling me they get depressed coming to church because of the answers they get from saints who all they want to hear. It's not that they don't care, you know. But how many weeks are we going to continue to whine? You know, they have some things not going now. But there's a part of our soul that is, I'm a child of God. And I love him. But the anguish of sin is affecting me. And I trust in God to take me through. But up to now, you don't hear. I just love him. And I want to encourage you, brother. I want to encourage you, sister. There's nothing wrong with saying the other part. But it's like, well, you know. They just have to come and ask me to pray for them after. Because you come. And you just simply want to know. There's hope. Because you just came from a battering. And you come inside. And you hear 
the negative. The world is so terrible, it's so hard, it's so... Of course it is. But we will rejoice in God our Savior. So even when we are going through this, the sting of sin, rejoice. The sting of sin is showing itself. So my purpose is not to talk about the fact that the part of our soul that is in bondage and wants deliverance sometimes is stuck and it takes over because all we can talk about is the bondage in our lives. That's not what the topic is, but I'm throwing it in because there's nothing like bondage to keep us focused on bondage. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. So even while we may say, I've been a sinner from birth from the moment my mother conceived me. And we say, I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you, Lord. That's a hopeful statement to make, not a depression. You all understand what I'm saying? It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey. But it's an important part because number one, this is what turns people away. For years, you're on the same cycle. You're, the bicycle didn't change. You're, you're, you're painted a different color, but you're still every, the same pothole you're falling down in. That's a problem. It's a problem because the saints literally can't understand what's wrong with you. And what I'm telling you is, what's wrong with you? There's a whole back system that God wants to expose and clean out. And you've got to come off of the pride. And you say, no, I'm not prideful. Well, the ones who say, I just need whatever. Once you say whatever to me, once you say whatever to God, then you will just, you will, you will hear, okay. That's what you, that's really what you want to know is whatever. Okay, but let me let you know what is coming strongly to me. But if you don't say that, I don't say nothing. I waiting for God to show you I'm not saying it. Because that's not my role. My role is not to speak when I'm not supposed to speak. When I'm asked, I'll speak. Do you understand? So number one, we need to know. Don't get frustrated. But if it's the same old, same old, same old, okay, I need to do something different. What is it? What is going on? I need to know. God, I need to know. Whoever's walking and discipling you, I need to know. Because I promise you, you're not stuck because God forgot you and went somewhere else and, eh, eh I forgot you. No, it's not that at all. It's not that. But he doesn't force. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, we are damaging people by our stuck selves. And the reason is, they want hope. Wait, that one's still so? Well, that will leave for me. People say that all the time, and I say, keep your gaze on Jesus. But the truth is, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. I said... I can't remember when, if it was last week or whatever. Our bondage doesn't only harm us, it harms others. So that's another reason why we have to say, just like Isaiah, woe is me, I'm unclean, what to do, what it is, what it is. And be prepared to hear what the Lord wants you to know. Because we don't really know ourselves. And the third thing is, we need to understand that as Christians, and I'll elaborate on this another time, you have a responsibility to encourage each other. So if the only thing that coming out of your mouth is how sad and hard life is, you need to include something else. Because we know it's hard and we want you to say that because we don't want you to lie. But he died and he rose for us, y'all. He's alive. There's a plan. 
but for the joy that lay before him, Christ carried the cross. That part of our soul that knows the truth needs to talk more. Not the parts that rail, defiled, frustrated, because that's how we just literally burden others who really want to be there for us. But being a Christian doesn't encourage them. Our responsibility is not simply to get help for our bondage. Our responsibility is to love people. And loving people means sometimes you will not burden them. And if you do, you tell them, you know, just like we read in the book of Micah where this is happening that is happening but we will praise god david always ended a lot of his psalms the majority he will tell god everything and then he will end but i love you but i trust you but i praise you do you all understand the rest of your soul that is downcast need to hear you say that as well as other people but i will rejoice in the lord we need to do that because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, whether we feel it or not, Jesus Christ is Lord, is God, has died on the cross for us, has made a way for us. One day there will be no more weeping. There will be no more tears. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Even though we can't get away from the sting of our sin against you, Lord, reveal that sin. So, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask you, Lord, that you would begin to search those areas we know nothing about, those areas that the bloodline claimed. And half the time, we don't even know what covenants they made with Satan. But we know that the blood of Jesus was shed for us. And God says, love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. So therefore, my soul, all parts of my soul must love the Lord. So Father, I'm asking you, those areas that are keeping me back, Send somebody, help me, Lord, where I could be fully transparent because I don't know myself. You only know me because you knit me together in my mother's womb. I don't know other people either, but you know them. So, Father, go deep. Go deep. Go deep. In those hearts that are saying right now, go deep. Go deep, Father. And begin to show us the sin that we don't know about, that you know, that you want to now expose. And it may not be always something we did, but it was something that was done to us. It was something that was promised to Satan on our behalf of the bloodline. And God, we don't know. All we know is we are stuck and we feel a heavy load. So, Father, as we spend this time with you, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, may you break strongholds today. And may you take us off the bicycle of good impressions pride and just gut us Lord rip out expose so that you can refill and transform us into your image and your likeness we thank you Lord in Jesus name Amen.